We're going to get started here. Let me get everybody in. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Hello. Hello. Doing good. Awesome. Good to see hey you. There. Good to see you. Um, I am in the airport. We're flying out. It's raining for the next week in Oregon. So we decided to go to Phoenix. Uh, Kirsty decided for Mother's Day, she wanted Phoenix where her daughter is. And it's uh, 96 degrees today. It'd be 100 on, a, on this weekend. So we're excited about just getting out of this rain and getting to the suntan from Hawaii. We don't want to lose it. But um, I'm excited to be here. I have a short call for you today. It's going to be action packed. And I prepped this morning on the way to the uh, one hour drive to the call today. And I think I have a message that's going to be valuable for you today. All right. So with no further ado, it's 902. Let's get rocking and rolling. So let me let me pull up my and you guys can still see me okay, right? Everything's good. Yes. yes? Yep. Okay. Yep. Awesome. So, you know, what I want to start with today is um, mindset. We talk so much about mindset and what that looks like. Um, let me go get the people in here. Sorry, people are still coming in a couple minutes late. But, um, you know, when, when we look at uh, everything going on in the world right now, it's just it's a hot mess if you think about it with rates and wars and it's just Roe versus Wade. Every day there's something that antagonizes your spirit and your belief and, and your hope and all these things. It seems like the more that we um, look at it, we attract more of it, right? So we get more of what we look at and what we're seeing. But what I want to focus on today is I have a million dollar mind. I think everybody on this call does too. We have million dollar minds. So don't hang around 10 cent people, right? And so number one for me today is if you have a million dollar mind, focus on hanging around million dollar mind people, not 10 cent mind people. I've got certain friends I hang with and in different respects and different quantities but I have those certain friends. I love I've been friends with them for a long time, but they're 10 cent minds. And I have to limit my exposure to the 10 cent minds because I have a million dollar mind. And every time I do, I will dilute the value of my mind and what I'm capable of and lower myself to that 10 cent mind. We don't want to do that. So that's what I just really want to impress upon you today is stay the course, stay mentally focused on how you can benefit, benefit your clients how you can help people through this. And you're going to see a theme through this today as I laid out six things that I think will really impact you today in a short 15-minute call. So number one, that million-dollar mind. Number two, celebrate progress, not perfection. Get out of the perfection business. Celebrate the progress that you're making in your life, in your real estate business, in your, in your relationships. Celebrate that progress. Measure the progress, celebrate it, and don't focus on per perfection. Too many, of, too many of us look at others and judge ourselves in a, in a place of, you know, what somebody else is doing, social media or success or others. Don't focus on per perfection. Focus on and celebrate your progress that you're making along the way. So bear with me. I'm going to go let somebody else in. Let me see. Okay, there. I have to uh, switch screens to let all the people in. All right, so that's number two. Number three, um, I love this. If you haven't read this book, it's uh, How to Run with Rhinoceroses, I think it's called, or The Life of a Rhinoceros. I've read the book twice. Don't have it with me. Don't remember the title. But rhinoceroses don't care who's around them, right? They just march through the jungle. And if you're in their way, you're going to get run over, right? What about if we become living like that thick skinned rhinoceros that doesn't care what anybody's doing? We know our path. We've laid out our foundation, our 30,000 foot business plan of what we want to accomplish, who we are morally, who we are spiritually, who we're showing up as, right? And be a freaking rhino rhinoceros just rolling through the lands. A rhinoceros does not care about anybody around him. If you're in the way, he's just going to step on you and move over. It's nothing personal, right? He's just 
he's on a mission and he's breaking down trees and bushes and he goes where he wants to go. He come and goes straight line even. You know, they don't have to work around a lot of things. So be the boss, be the rhinoceros in your own life of what's invaluable or what's valuable, what's important and what you're going to focus on, right? Because there's a difference between being a narcissist and being a rhinoceros. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about not caring about other people and just being laser focused on your own good. I'm talking about being, you know, infallible with your vision of what you want to accomplish, whether it's an EXP or in another business or in your personal life, you know, live at a level 10 in every level that you can in this area. That book had an impact on me, had an impact on a lot of my coaching clients, my coaching clients from three, four years ago, still send me pictures of the rhinoceros book when they get in a slump and they grab that as a, as a way to get back on top of the game, right? So that's something to think about there. Number four, close to my heart, Brent Gove says this all the time, be good to people, compliment people regularly. Try to do a good deed every day. Maybe even it's once a week, you focus on, I'm going to do a good deed for somebody that can't repay me, doesn't expect it, maybe even anonymously, but you're doing it for you. You're doing it for your soul. What you're going to do is you're going to shoot a massive amount of dopamine into those people. Because when you compliment somebody, I mean, truly compliment, like think about when you're talking to somebody and you take the time to look deeply into their eyes, into their soul. If you compliment a piece of jewelry, a piece of clothing, a way they're acting, a way they're carrying themselves, something they did nice for somebody else, right? A dual compliment. All that stuff is valuable. Shoot them with a, a shot of dopamine. By the way, you're going to get a dopamine hit too by feeling good about doing that. And it, it could be a small thing. It could be holding a door open for somebody. It could be letting somebody go in front of you in the line that you know needs a little more, looks a little more stressed than you are, right? We just rolled up to the airport. They have a kind of a, a concierge VIP parking at Portland Airport. That's awesome. It's been closed for two years for COVID. And I was really wanting to park there, right? Driving the new car. And I wanted to park there. And um, I went online. It was locked up. Didn't allow me to do anything. So I come rolling up. And it was super busy. People moving all over the place. Gal kind of rushingly opens the door to the window and slides. Do you have a reservation? I go, no, I don't. I really tried. I tried for like 20 minutes online to change different dates and times of our flights, but it just wouldn't work. She goes, we're sold out. And I said, um, I'm sorry. Is there any way that you could fit me? And I would be internally grateful. And, um, she's like, you're going to have to talk to the people out there. So I talked to this young guy out here and I said, Hey, would you mind, um, you mind if we could get in here by some chance? He goes, I'll get you in there. No problem. And then, um, all of a sudden I go, Hey, I, I need to do a zoom call real quick at nine o'clock. It's like five minutes to nine. And I said, I know it's, it's kind of out of your way, but is there any way I can park in this area for about 15 minutes and, um, you know, do my zoom call. I'm committed to doing that. And, and then when I'm done, I'll come and see you with the luggage and all that stuff. He goes, no way right here in the very front of the whole thing. He asked, he asked us to pull in. I'm literally sitting in this, in this area here. Um, and, and he's just like, take your time, do whatever you need. So I complimented him, right? I didn't pay him anything yet. I complimented him on his behavior and just how good of a job he was doing. And he was like, thank you. That's amazing. Stay there as long as you want. I rewarded him $20 because he did a great customer service thing. And it wasn't, I didn't do it ahead of time to get that service, right? I rewarded the service. But what I did is I just brightened his day, had a big smile on his face. He's like, stay here as long as you want. Um, his name was what? Was it Zachary? No. I think it was, what was it? I can't remember. Oh, I thought it was Zachary, but I go, I'm Randy. Thank you so much. So we have this uh, thing, right? Well, a few seconds later, this guy comes walking up, little scowl on his face, little kind of Filipino guy. And you could, he's making eye contact with me and I'm on the Zoom call now and I'm kind of not paying him any attention. Well, here comes Zachary kind of tugging on his shirt. He's good. This is my guy. Leave him alone. Right. All that happened because of, I believe my intention of being good to the people in the booth. My intention of making a friend with somebody that's working out here, rewarding them, right? It could have been a compliment, didn't have to be a 20. It could have been a compliment, just equally as valuable. So something really, really uh, close to my heart on this is try it. See what happens when you get in to the situations to where you can impact somebody in just a few minutes by complimenting them and, and making them feel good about uh, their day and what they're doing, okay? 
people are still coming in at 9 11. So I'm doing my best to admit them on my cell phone on Zoom and stay on task with my uh, with my morning speech here. So number five, some of you may have heard this, but it's a really, really powerful story. And I've got two stories to share with you here. Very short, both of them. There's a flea story. You may have heard this recently. I know Brent talked about it recently this week, but I had heard about it just like a week ago and watched this, watched this particular story. But they took hundreds of fleas and put them in a cup, like a short bar glass cup, you know, maybe a three inch tall, tall cup. They put the fleas in there. They immediately started jumping. Fleas can jump a hundred times their body size or a thousand times, whatever it is. They can jump feet, right? I mean, like three, four feet. It's amazing what a flea can do jump wise. So they're jumping out of this, out of this cup and they just put this like coaster, kind of a lid on top of this cup. And all of a sudden the fleas were going bang, banging their head against this thing. And pretty soon, you know, all of them were jumping, hitting their head. And then it slowed down and slowed down. And after a day, only one or two, after three days, not one flea was jumping and hitting the lid, the ceiling of their possibility, right? Of getting out of that cup. So they basically just reprogram them, themselves. They condition themselves that that hurts banging my head up there. I'm not going to do that. And so they start spreading that through the community that don't jump. It's okay. Don't do that. Right. And so guess what? They take the top off this, this uh, cup after three days, no fleas jump out. Literally they have a ceiling they're jumping, but they're only jumping the height of the ceiling of their conditioned belief of what is going to be the ceiling. And so it's a really remarkable story when you think about that. But the real part of the story is this, those fleas, um, after they were, you know, bred and had babies, the babies would only jump to the top of the cup. Now, these babies never experienced the lid, but they've been conditioned through genetics or parents or whatever that and, and the community around them, the people that are surrounding them, right? There's a lot of other stories that relate this way, but that second generation, the offspring of fleas would not jump out of that cup because they were conditioned that there was a ceiling. Have you been conditioned that there's a ceiling? What is your ceiling? Right? There's another story, a little bit morbid, if you think about it. But there's a story of mice and they put mice in a, a big 55 gallon, like a wine barrel of water filled to the top. And it was, you know, five inches from the top, the mice could not get out. And they put mice in this, in this barrel and they were swimming frantically and crawling up the sides and doing the best they could. And after only a short 15 minutes to about an hour, they started drowning. And the mice, one after another, started drowning and sinking to the bottom of the barrel. And what they did is right at that moment, they took one of the, mi the mice out of the barrel and they dried it off for five minutes. They dried it off. They petted it. They loved on it. They gave it hope. And they put it back in the barrel with the other mice. And the other mice are struggling and they're fighting for their lives. And eventually, after just a couple hours, every mice, every mouse in that barrel drowned and fell, fell to, their, to the, their death, their demise, except that one mouse. And every 15 minutes, right about the time that he would start losing hope, they'd take it out and wipe it down, dry it off again, love it a little bit, give it a little tiny bit of food, put it back in the barrel. That mouse lived solely by himself for over three days. And all the other mice were long gone in just a couple hours. And why is that? What it is, is that mouse was shown hope. When you have a belief that there's hope, you'll do anything because there's hope around the corner. It's when we lose hope that things change for us. Don't lose hope, right? Don't fall within the ceiling of what you've been conditioned to do. And then don't lose hope along the way. EXP journey is a lot like that. People come in full of excitement and then they bang their head on the ceiling a few times. and They go, that hurts. I'm not going to do that. But it's a, it's a false ceiling that has been conditioned for you, by you, right? And then the last one is related to this. It's fear, F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. Fear, once again, false evidence appearing real. We've heard of this, 90% or more of the things that we worry the most about never come to fruition. Right. But we're naturally, I mean, 
listen, for 200,000 years, we have been, you know, born. And the reason we succeeded in our existence is because we were able to have fight or flight. We were able to run when, when we're part of the food chain, right back to the caveman days. So we were, we're born into a place of fear. That is really how we're surviving. That's, that is kind of how we've made it evolutionary through these years. That's the point. Don't let a fear of false evidence of appearing real guide you because your monkey 200,000 year old brain is telling you, I need to run. There's fight or flight, right? Turn around and fight. Take and find all the evidence. And if it's not a true fear, if it's a made up fear, just get through that fear. Eat that frog, get through it. It's going to be so value and so important for you as you go through both your real estate and EXP journeys. And, and this is not a EXP call. This is not a attraction call. This is about you and your production. I'm EXP. I'm proud of it, right? But it doesn't matter if you're Cobalt Banker, Remax, Tether Williams, it doesn't matter. Your story is still the same. You're identifying what your story is going to be. You write the story. Don't put a ceiling of conditioned on that story. If you want to be the number one agent in the state of your choice, be it, do it. Right. And so for me, I just really feel passionate about this. Go out in the world, help somebody make an impact. We're in the airport. It's usually a very stressful environment. I love traveling lately. Um, I've set myself up for, I'm going to have a great experience. I'm, I've set myself up for, I'm going to have a great seat. I've set myself up for all these things are going to happen. I'm going to impact people along the way. I'm going to meet people along the way. Right. This is, this is the journey of my, you know, I've put this in place for myself. It's not happening by accident. And so be, being aware of your, your, you know, your sense of where you're at and your sense of being good to others and your sense of helping others, go in there with that notion and people are going to respond to you. You know, I love the fact that we're traveling without masks now not a political statement. I'm just, I love seeing people's faces. I love seeing the smiles. I, I love seeing the reactions. And people before used to be able to kind of be stoic in their, in their in, in expressions and stuff because of the masks. I love the fact that we're back to that communicating style of smiles and appreciation. All right. So that's the end of my piece. I'm going to open it up for any Q and A that you may have for me. I love this content today. Um, it's a great reminder for myself as well. And, um, you know, go out there and impact somebody's life today in a way that is going to fill your gas tank. It's going to shoot dopamine into them, dopamine into you, and you're going to be better for it. So with that, take your mute off or take your mic off mute if you have anything for me. I'd love to answer any questions. And then after that, we're going to bounce and get on this airplane. I see a chat. Let me see if I can read the chat. Ch -ch chat. Okay. Thank you. Chat. Yes. Thank you. Samantha, Cindy, the book Rhinoceros Success. That's it. Thank you. How to charge full speed into every opportunity. I love that book. Um, love mindset time, Samantha. Me too. Melissa, great stuff. Thanks, Randy. My pleasure. The pleasure is mine. You guys have any questions for me? You could chat it or you could ask me. And um, if not, we'll end it here in just a minute and you can get on with your day. But no matter where I am in the world, I'm going to be here for you every single week because I love this. Hopefully I'll be able to say, hey, I'm on a boat today. Hey, I'm on this today. Hey, I'm working in the garden today. Whatever it may be. And part, part of it's going to like be, where's Waldo, right? Where's Randy, the stick pin on the map type thing. But again, life by design. Not everybody likes that life. I love that life. I love traveling. I love new places, right? So any questions for me? Happy to help you. We have any new people on today for your first time. Randy, I wanted to run something by you. Yes, sir. Years ago, I uh, came to fruition where I wake up every day unemployed. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great way to be gritty and hungry. And I've continued to invest in real estate in my area here in Silicon Valley. And I just, it's been tough at times, but just dig in and uh, work it. I appreciate that input, man. It's absolutely true. You got to get up and eat that frog every day, right? Um, we only we only get to eat what we what we hunt and kill. And I, I know I'm I'm having some references that could be a little rough for people today, but but it's true. We're in the jungle. We've got to go out and we've got to 
we've got to hunt every day and we've got to kill and we got to do it again tomorrow. That is the real estate industry. And you could look at it a lot of different ways. I'm here to impress upon people. I'm here to change lives and help first time home buyers. All that stuff is absolutely true, right? Emotionally. But at the end of the day, you've got to get up. You got to, you got to put on your gear. You got to go out and you got to hunt. You got to kill and you got to eat. I love that. Thank you. Anybody else? I see another chat. Let's see. Sarah, hang around. Me. Thank you for, thank you for putting that in there. I appreciate that. I'm going to have to get you checked into the system. Okay. They're asking us to go now. So I'm going to wrap up the call, but um, we're, uh, we're having a great day, man. We appreciate you. Thank you all for being here. And um, if we could be of any service in the future or any time, let us know, okay? Safe Thanks, Friday. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for being here. And uh, I appreciate you. Go crush the damn be a rhinoceros. Thanks, everybody.